Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth, listens to my voice. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Almost a century ago, a pastor gave a sermon entitled, Arise, Sir Knight. That sermon might have fallen into obscurity had it not been recorded decades later by a very famous singer and actor. Here it is for you now once more. Here is the one we call King. Here is a man who was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another village. He worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. Then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. He never owned a home. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never had a family of his own. He never went to college. He never put his foot inside a big city. He never traveled 200 miles from the place he was born. He never did any of the things that usually accompany greatness. He had no credentials but himself. While still a young man, the tide of popular opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. One of them denied him. He was turned over to his enemies. He went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed upon a cross between two thieves. While he was dying, executioners gambled for the only piece of property he had on earth his coat. When he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Nineteen long centuries have come and gone, and today he is the centerpiece of the human race and leader of the column of progress. I am far within the mark when I say that all the armies that ever marched, all the navies that were ever built, all of the parliaments that ever sat, all the kings that ever reigned, put together, have not affected the life of man upon this earth as powerfully as that one solitary life. That life sounds little like the life of a king. 
Would you agree? I hear of no opulent court, no gold crown, no ermine-lined robe, no bejeweled scepter, no overflowing coffers of money. There's no talk of political jockeying or diplomatic maneuvering or bellicose warmongering. But that shouldn't surprise us, should it? For he tells us that his kingdom is not from this world where such trappings are expected and such actions the norm. The kingdom that Jesus says is at hand flows from the love, justice, and mercy of his and our Heavenly Father. He reveals true kingly bearing to us not through actions of self-interest, but through self-denial and self-sacrifice. The Apostle Paul explained it so movingly to us in Philippians when he said Jesus Christ, who though he was born in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God so highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. In this passage today, Jesus says that those who belong to the truth, that is, those who are willing to follow Jesus, will listen to his voice, will listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd, will hear the King of their heart. This Advent season, I urge you to take time to listen for that voice. And I must tell you, it is not easy amidst the cacophony of voices that vie for our attention and pull our hearts and our minds away from ultimate matters. It is not easy. But this Advent season I say to you, take time to be still, to listen to and for the one who came to show forth God's love to the world. In that quietness, in that stillness, Gain strength, gain strength to show forth that love in word and deed. And in that way, we will pay homage to our King. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Benevolent ruler of nations and protector of peoples, we come with thanksgiving for your mighty care. You do not draw apart from your people, but through Christ choose to dwell in our midst. We give thanks that he became the servant of humanity and stooped to the needs of the lowly and humble. 
in him, we have assurance that you hear us when we pray. Grieve with us when we are afflicted, mourn as we do the loss of loved ones, and care enough to judge and redeem us when we stray from your way. We pray for those who govern us in society. Give to them a sense of your compassion and care. Keep them from setting themselves apart from the needs of those whom they serve and endow them with patience and wisdom to work for the well-being of all. As we elect them to office, lead us to entrust them with sufficient authority to perform their duties. Keep us from ignoring their judgments and help us to serve with them toward the common good of all people. We pray for the leaders of foreign lands, those aligned with us and those antagonistic toward us. Help us to work with our allies for common strength, shared benefits, and greater commitment to justice and peace. With those who are antagonistic, grant us some measure of understanding, compassion, and the humility to see their point of view. Keep us through Christ from rebuilding the walls of enmity and hostility he came to abolish. And may we, through your spirit, be granted sufficient wisdom and courage to work peaceably with all peoples. We yearn for the time when your vision is realized and the lion shall lie down with the calf and war shall be no more. This we ask through Christ our King who taught his disciples to pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.